Today's uh, talk, uh, in some ways, will be, in some ways, the most important talk uh, this Ramadan in regards to the uh, some of the passages of Quran. Now, how many people here know Arabic? Brother Shreem, do you know Arabic? Uh, Brother Hussein knows Arabic, right? Okay. Good. So, oh, okay, Brother Jalat knows Arabic too. But uh, the passage that I want to discuss is a very, 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 very important uh, passage of the Quran. Probably like one of the most significant. It would be one that is extremely shocking if you think about it. It is so comprehensive that you would have to uh, bow down and tell, tell yourself that no one could have said this but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. Number two, it's very relevant to our history and the times and the end times that we're living in. And it answers another question, which is that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start with subhanallah bi asra bi abdi ilayla min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa? I want to start with this passage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Bani Israel, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ And we made a uh, judgment. It was written. It was قَدْرَ وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ You would, Bani Israel, would cause chaos in the world twice. How many times? Bani Israel would cause chaos in the world twice. This ayah is taken to have two meanings, and both are correct, 100% correct, because the Prophet himself said, لَيَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ مَا أَتَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ حَزْبُ النَّعْنُ بِالنَّعْنُ This hadith in Al-Mazi. That all those things will happen to my ummah that happened to the previous ummah, like two shoes of a pair. So if something happened to Bani Israel, it, happened, it will happen to us. Now, let me just... Uh, Start backwards today, maybe this will help you understand a little bit. I'll go backwards and then forward. Bani Israel ended in the person of who? Which prophet? It ended in the person of who? That's how it started. It ended with who? Musa to Isa. Two prophets starting, Musa and Harun, ending with Yahya and Isa. Right? When when Bani Israel ended, what was the situation of Bani Israel? The Roman Empire was in charge, right? The Roman Empire was in charge of the Muslim Ummah at that time, right? And the ulama, which were called the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they had aligned themselves with the Roman Empire, okay, for the interests of the Roman Empire, the ulama of that time, they had aligned themselves with the interests of the Roman Empire against the Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you notice, very important point. When Zakaria was there, he was in charge of the temple. He helped nur nurture and grow who? Maryam. But very few years after that, Yahya is where? Not in the temple. He's out in the wilderness. He's been kicked out of the temple. And they try to kill him, right? And they do kill him. And Isa is also not in the temple. He's been he's outside the temple. Okay? So the point is that at the end of Bani Israel, the Roman Empire was in charge of the Muslim Ummah at that time. The same thing will be our case. The, our case will be when Isa Islam comes, the Roman Empire and the Roman world will be in charge of the Muslim Ummah as it is today. Now going back to the beginning. The beginning of Bani Israel was the first people to attack Bani Israel came from the north. The first people to attack the Muslim Ummah also came from the north. The Assyrians and the Babylonians attacked Bani Israel and took them as slaves. In our case, it was the Crusaders. The Crusaders came. And when the Crusaders came, what did they do? What was the biggest task they had in mind? What was the biggest thing that they had in mind? To take over Masjid, which Masjid? Masjid Al-Aqsa. They took over Masjid Al-Aqsa, they destroyed Masjid Al-Aqsa the first time. Then the Masjid Al-Aqsa was recaptured in the Muslim Ummah through the hands of Okay? Let's keep this in mind. And Masjid al-Aqsa was taken away from Bani Israel first through the, uh, the, the, uh, the um, Babylonian Empire. 
And the second time it was taken away from Bani Israel through the hands of the Roman Empire. In 70 AD, the Masjid Al-Aqsa was destroyed. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Bani Israel, regarding that, Allah said to Bani Israel, you are now going to be dispersed in the earth. Go and you're in the earth, all of the earth. Some Jews are here, some Jews are here, some Jews are here. And then, وَجِعْنَاكُمْ بِالْلَّفِيفَةِ Until in the end of the times, we will bring you back to Bani Israel. Just keep this in mind. The point I'm trying to make is, what does Allah say about this whole history? Where Masjid Al-Aqsa was destroyed twice in Bani Israel, and will be destroyed therefore in the Ummah of Muhammad, how many times? Twice. What happened to them will happen to us because it's not just history that happened to them, but it is Quranic history that happened to them. One time, Muslim Aqsa has already been taken away from us, and you can only imagine the type of wars and situation it would create if they, is, they drop down Muslim Aqsa and build their own temple there, which is what they plan to do. Okay, now after understanding these, now I'll go to the ayat. وَقَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فِي الْكِتَابِ لَتُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَتَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًّا كَبِيرًا O Bani Israel, we wrote it twice. You will cause fitna in the world. Who is, who is going to cause fitna? Who are they? They're the Muslims of that time. They're the what? The Muslims of that time. They're the people with Dawud alayhi salam. All the prophets are with them. They're the people. Allah said, you're going to cause what? Fitna in the world twice. يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِلَ لَا تُفْسِدُنَّ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَّتَيْنِ وَلَا تَعْلُنَّ عَلُوًا كَبِيرًا And you will show great arrogance on earth. Then what? فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first wa'da, wa'ad, you know Urdu maybe get the wa'ad kalma. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا When the first of the promises came, which in our case happened in the case of the crusaders, and happened in the case of Bani Israel, in the case of the, the Babylonians, right? The Nebuchadnezzar, yes. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ الْأُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيمٍ We will send against you a force of our servants. Who are our servants here? إِبَادًا لَنَا is here the non-Muslims, the Babylonians. إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيمٍ And they will have great strength in war. Right? What will happen? فَجَاسُ خِلَالَ الْدِيَارِ They'll enter into your houses. They will de 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 demolish everything. This was a promise that was going to happen, it was written, it was going to happen, it happened before in history and then repeated itself in the Ummah of Muhammad Wasallam. When they came to Jerusalem, they butchered everyone like there's no, you know, because the, uh, the first time the punishment came from the north and the east. The uh, Assyrians from the north, the Babylonians from the east. And in our case, it came from the Crusaders from the north and the Tatars from the east. Is exactly the same copy of history. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that gave them, after they were destroyed, then Allah what? Revive, ah, you know the, the situation of Muslims during the Tatars was so bad that no one could have thought that Islam will revive itself again. No one would have thought that then the Ottoman Empire came, the Saljuks and the Mamluks and the, and the Ottoman Empire came out of that and Islam became a great empire after that again. So now, إِذَا جَاءَ وَعْضُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ إِبَادًا لَنَا أُلِي بَعْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُ خِلَالَ الْدِيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعْضَ مَفْعُولًا ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمْ كَرَّةً عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرًا لَفِيرًا We increased you after that, we gave you a second chance. Maybe this time you'll come back to us properly. Then we gave you wealth, and we gave you children, and we gave you so many resources under your feet that were there. Okay? إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنْفُسِكُمْ If you do good, you do good for yourself. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا If you do something evil, that's on you too. Okay? فَإِذَا جَعَ الْوَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ When the second promise came, لِيَسُوُّجُوا هَكُمْ So that your faces will be darkened with humiliation this time. لِيَسُوُّجُوا هَكُمْ وَيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ Then they entered into the Masad Masjid. Which Masjid? Aqsa. They entered into the Masjid. كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ The first, just as they entered the first time. You know, they uh, entered Masjid Al-Aqsa, I forget the name of the, um, the, the book, but they, they turned it into, a, a part of it, into a church, into a place where they have their dances and parties, and this was done during the Crusades, like this. This will now happen, okay, this will now happen in our case. This is one eye, this is one interpretation of this eye. There's another interpretation, which is the converse of this, which I'll go over very quickly. 
إن أحسنتم أحسنتم لأنفسكم وإن أسأتم فلها فإذا جاء وعد الآخرة ليزوم وجوهكم ويدخلوا المسجد كما دخلوا أول مرة وليتبروا ما علوا تتبيرا This is literally how it was that you had the Roman fortress on top of the, the masjid meaning the Roman fortress was high this wailing wall that they have nowadays there's no wailing wall the, Allah says everything was destroyed this wailing wall they have is actually part of the Roman fortress that they have it's part of the, where did the Roman fortress go? there's so many contradictions in saying that that's the wailing wall there's a whole history behind that but I'm not going into that the wailing wall was overlooking the masjid and that masjid was completely destroyed, decimated. In, in, there was nothing left. In fact, the historian, jo, who was the great Jewish historian, Josephine, he's very popular, every academic knows him as a great, a great historian. He says there was nothing left of the temple. Not one brick was left intact. So when Masjid Aqsa will be dropped, what will be put in its place is the temple that they want. Now, why? Well, how does this connect with Isra wal Mi'raj? This is the one thing I wanted to show you. Because the Prophet, Allah could have taken the Prophet anywhere. Right? Allah could have taken the Prophet from Mecca to anywhere. Why to Masjid Al-Aqsa? And why do they want this area? Because, you see, let me explain it to you this way. Whoever in history controls Jerusalem, controls the world. It's the history of Jerusalem. Whoever controlled Jerusalem controlled the world, number one. Number two, so the Prophet was taken to Jerusalem to show the Prophet where that last battle, because this, you know, the Prophet was very sad, no one's accepting his call. So the Prophet was told, no, don't worry, we're going to take you to that place. And the Prophet led the prayers. The Isra was to show the Prophet where his Ummah, from where his Ummah would have that last battle of between the, the good and the evil, you could say. Where that last battle will take place. And why Masjid Al-Aqsa? Masjid Al-Aqsa because the way the Shayateen work, I'm paraphrasing because I don't have time anymore, very quickly, the way Shayateen work is that when the Prophet was able to go from, from Jerusalem, not from any other place, from Jerusalem to the heavens, the, the Jewish Kabbalah, the Jewish mysticism, Jewish magic believes this is the place that opens the portal. You know how when the Shayateen, they want to go up and they want to listen to who? Listen to the angels and listen to what's going on. Jewish Kabbalah believes this is the place you must have in order to be able to connect to the world that's the other world. This is why they also kind of like, it's very interesting because Kabbalah and what happened with the Prophet, the Prophet going to Mi'raj, to the other world, right? This was the place. And so they feel that in order to really get all the power of the world, number one, Jerusalem is the place. If you have it, then you control them. Number two, if you want the powers that Jerusalem has, you have to establish the temple, and you have to be able to have this kind of like portal that is a portal into the next world. And so this is the other reason that they, especially the ultra-Jews, those people that they don't even read Torah, they don't even read Talmud, they read the books of like Kabbalah, they read the books of Zuhar, the books that actually say, oh, you know, all non-Jews are like cockroaches, like the, you know, the very, like the things that they hide. And this is now more in the out, open, out in the open than it was before. But the reason that the, a lot of the ultra-Jews want uh, the, this area, and they want to drop us from Aqsa. Now, you know this has gone step, step by step. The first step was establishment of Israel. The next step has been done by Trump. So now even the, the temple coins they have made in the name of Trump. Then the next step was make Jerusalem the capital of Israel, right? So like this, it'll happen until finally they try to achieve their goal, how much of it they achieve or not, Allah knows best. But the indication in Qur'an is, it's going to be a very difficult time for Muslims as we approach that time. Assalamu alaikum.